Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I thought we'd have a look at the um, holy clay pots today. And it's obviously it's mainly Catlia types. Um, there are a few others in, uh, mixed in amongst them. Um, well, one anyway. <laughs> one of the ones that wasn't a Catlia has been taken out of the holy clay pot to be uh, posted. But, um, oh, it's an ant. Ah, it was an ant. There's still a few about, but nothing to worry about. Um, I'll do these, it feels strange at the moment, because I've been using the sprayer so much for reasons stated. Um, I haven't handled my pots for some time. I mean, this is the first time the holy clay pots have been actually taken down and given a flipping good soak for some time. I mean, they've been getting a fair bit of water with the sprayer, you know, and fed and everything like that, so they're not getting neglected. But it feels odd not picking the pots up. So I thought we'll have a better look at them today while they have a proper water and a you know a good good feed and everything. Um, this is the um, apple blossom. Um, finished blooming now. So that, that's it till next time. Um, and at the moment all I have is a single new growth. Just the one. I was hoping for a second eye to push. I mean there's still time. You know, thing, things do happen. There is a there is an eye on this latest growth, the one that bloomed. But um, you just have to wait and see. But uh, one new growth starting at the moment. This is the um, No ID Hybrid. It's the one that has the large magenta blooms with the um, deep yellow in the lip. Um, lovely blooms. And um, yeah, it's the same position with this one. Um, this has bloomed on the last three growths, basically and currently has another new growth pushing out. Um, uh, it's away from the media, but not far enough away for me to worry about it, because whenever the roots come out of this section, they'll go straight down in there. They've only got half an inch to go. It'd be really nice if one of these back eyes could push as well, but um, you never know with cat leers. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. That's those two. Well, this is my um, largest cat leer, not, not in number of pseudo bulbs, but in actual physical size. The, the pseudo bulbs are enormous on this thing. Um, this doesn't have any new growths, uh, like just starting, but what it does have is a maturing one. Or matured, I would say, it's done it now. Um, so this is the latest growth. The sheath does have buds in, so that will be the next one to bloom, I would suggest. There's no signs of any other new growths pushing out, but this one did lose one of its leads before I got it. And there is an eye on that lead that I wish would push. Um, sometimes that happens if a new growth is damaged, which this one was before I got it, it was broken off physically. Sometimes that triggers a, the other eye on the same, or another eye, on the same uh, pseudo bowl. But um, so far, I mean, the other lead pushed out this one, which bloomed. And that only had a single leaf on it, yeah? And this one doesn't seem to make up its mind, although the bulbs that are left with leaves on, I did take some off when I repotted it, um, have both got pairs of leaves. But the one that I produced that bloomed only produced one leaf. And now it's gone back to two again. <laughs> In the main, it's a bifoliate, so, I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. But, um, yeah, I mean, the latest growth's matured and will bloom down the line a bit. It shouldn't be too long. I mean, once the buds form at the base of the sheath, it, you know, it should push on now. We should get some blooms there. It'd be nice to have three, because they are very large blooms and very attractive and quite fragrant. So uh, it'd be nice to see that one again. I have my Catlia types. This is the one that has the largest leaves by far. Um, this, is, this, is, oh, this is a very, very tall plant. It's Lelia purpurata variety atropurpurea, so it's a bit of a mouthful, but um, it was bought from Equigenera last year at Malvern, and um, at that particular time, where are we? These two here were new growths, so they were right down at the base, so these two have grown nicely, and they both have signs of something in the base of the leaf, but they don't seem to be moving um, and it's now got two new growths which are at uh, quite an this one's at quite an advanced stage um, that, that's pushed on nicely that one 
and um, the other one around the other side. It looked weak at first, but since then it's just pushed on. And um, yeah, it's now a nice new growth. So again, I've grown two new growths from start to finish, and now I've got another two, you know, starting and halfway. So it's doing well, this one, as a plant. And at some point, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I've either got to let it climb over the pot, but at the moment I'm using light. I'm trying to get the two latest growths to come this way, because all the weight is over here, and even though it's in a clay pot, it's unsteady, with all the weight hanging over the side of the pot. And bad point on my part, um, and I don't know why I did it, I can't remember, but um, at the time when this was potted, for some reason I tried to maintain this rhizome at the back. Maybe because it had roots. But since then, this back end has sort of died. There's, there's no point in that being there anymore. Which means all the plant is in half the pot. And the other half's not going to get used. It also means that the next two growths, some of these roots are going to be out of the pot. But then a lot of them are out of the pot anyway. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to train this one and, and just give it more light at the back of the plant to push these two latest growths back over this way. Just try and balance it up a little bit. But it is a bit, it's right on the edge of the pot now as well. If I try and take it out of the pot, there will be root damage. Um, I'll be thinking about that. Maybe when the next two growths start. Hello, pussycat. What are you doing then? Hey. Seems to want to make an appearance in nearly every video now. <laughs> Soapy cat. Okay, so that one's that. That's the uh, Lalia. This is a, a little rescue plant. Um, it is like a, a midi-sized um, Catlia type. Um, it's never going to have bulbs much bigger than the ones it's got, but um, it's in a state of rescue. There's two pieces in here. Um, that side over there, which produced this week new growth but at least it produced one and at the moment it's not producing any new roots the other piece produced this growth here with a sheath that didn't bloom and is now producing yet another one and it is producing roots so half of the plant is doing okay and will make it the other half i'm not so sure but give it time um but yeah this is um, it's actually an SC, so a Sophrocatlia, but um, virtually all of the Sophronitis were reclassified and most of them went into Catlia. But it's Rose Pixie Pinafore, and um, in its day it was an awarded plant. Now I've had this in bloom, I believe, but it would be many years ago. This plant just kept coming uphill, going downhill, up, down, up, down. And I believe it probably had the dreaded at some point. Well obviously that would have been treated and hopefully it's uh, getting over it now as they say. Um, pushing out roots with active tips you know and, and, and a couple of new growths sort of those are the signs that uh, the new part of the plant is okay. Now this one is probably as far as leaves are concerned one of my nicest looking cattleyas <laughs> because it's got a good set of healthy leaves. I mean some of the older ones are starting to yellow but those are old leaves you know. Um, this is um, it's a BLC so a Brasso Lalio Cattleya. Um, again a lot of the Lalias have been reclassified so have a lot of the Brassavolas so it's difficult to say whether it still is or not um, but it's Young Min Orange. It was in bloom a while back and um, put on a good show actually. Oh and um, Currently we've got a new growth coming out here, um, we've got another one over this side and, and it looks like another one may start there. Um, but at the moment two, two new growths pushing on, um, it's filled the pot with roots, it's, it's done its thing with the roots so uh, yeah it's a nice plant. Uh, these two are, um, this is the uh, one that's literally just gone out of, uh, just gone out of bloom now. Um, look at that. I have to deal with that, I suppose. I've got a new type of spray now. Yeah, they're, they're getting a hold on this one. Yep, um, I have to deal with that. That's the consequences of not handling my plant plants frequently. Things can take off. What have we got in here then? We've got two new growths near the rim of the pot by my thumb. And, 
Oh, and there's another one up the back. So, th so this one's just finished blooming. Obviously, the new growths are uh, now starting to push on. Um, they'll do an awful lot better if I can get rid of that scale. Uh, once I see scale getting onto leaves, then it's that's serious. Yeah, um, I do get a few round the base of the plant now and again. Um, they're, they're easy to deal with, or relatively easy, despite the fact they keep coming back. But once I see them uh, making an advance onto the leaves, like that, then they need dealing with severely. So that whole plant will now have to be sprayed rather than the spot treatment. And I have a new spray. <coughs> I'll show you what it is. That's the new one. On the grounds the Provado doesn't seem to be doing its job as well, I thought I'd try virtually the only other thing that's available to me as a systemic and contact killer. And on the list of things it does specifically say scale. So that's the thing you've got to watch. It also says spider mite. Um, you often need a separate treatment for spider mite, but this says it does the lot, so so be it. Um, it also mentions that you can get resistance but it specifically says that resistance is common with white fly. Well, I don't get them. I don't have the right sort of plants for them to bother in here. Or in the garden, for that matter. But anyway, that's what I'm sort of trying now. Um, chances are the low-level ingredient, the active ingredient, is exactly the same as in the Provado. But sometimes it makes a difference to how it works on what it's mixed up with. You know, in other words, what else is in there. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll give that a try, see if that's a little more effective. Can't be much worse, can it? Now this is um, Bulbophyllum Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry, and it's um, three back bulbs that had new growth starting, and two plants that were in the same pot, all taken out and put in here. So it's all in one place now. And I thought, as far as the back bulbs are concerned, they'll either grow or they won't. <laughs> if they don't, they can get pulled out. But this does have quite a lot of new growth. Some are maturing. Um, this one matured, but the leaf's upside down. This one's pushing on nicely. That's come out from there. Got another new growth here. There's two over here. Um, this one's maturing. Um, that one's maturing with a hole in it. That means I've got a slug somewhere. Possibility, but yeah, so th this this is a, a mismatch, a, a mix and match. It's got bulbs that are virtually mature, some that are maturing and some that are just starting as new growth. So um, it should end up being quite a good pot full. Um, we've got a new growth heading out in this direction and another one here so this bald patch here <laughs> that's going to have two growths on it which will then extend and hopefully fill that space that growth's come out into that section so um, eventually it should be quite a massive pot full even though there's four individual no, five individual plants in there um, three of which only had one bulb and signs of a new growth so uh, hopefully that will fill that up and the idea is that um, with multiple plants at various stages, the idea is that I'll either get a succession of blooms or possibly even several spikes at the same time. Um, so that sh it may be down the line, that should look quite good. But it's still trying to establish itself at the moment, still trying to get roots down in the media and stuff like that. It's a real pain keeping that one hydrated, which it does need to be. These don't need to dry out at all. Because um, the, the clay is so soft, it just sucks the moisture out of the media. So I have to water that a lot more often than the other holy clay pots because of the pot. Well, and probably because there's a lot of plant in there. So uh, yeah, it takes a bit of looking after that, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Now these two are on final warning. <laughs> either start growing well or you're going out um, they've just been around in a sorry state for a while um, I took them off their mounts put them in the holy clay pots to see if that would improve them maybe it will it's a bit early to say yet but certainly the good Brassavola nodosas I've seen are nearly all in pots and um, the other ones are hybrid so oh, let's have a look then and see what they're doing haven't been handled for a while. Right, this nodosa has got a new growth here. Um, it's got another one coming out here, another one here, and another one here. 
and it does have some active roots that are maintaining their growing tips at the moment. So this could be in a state of well, well advanced recovery. This now should pull on. I'm okay with that one. This one is David Sanders, a hybrid. Um, never bloomed for me, despite having sheaths on growths every single time, but not yet produced a bloom. Um, this moment has a single new growth pushing on. There's a little bit of signs of activity of root growth, but not much. Got my eye on this one. I think that might have the uh, dreaded, or had possibly, and it's still trying to push away from it. Um, anyway, it has a single new growth at the moment, and um, to be watched carefully, both of those. Um, I think the Nadosa's safe now. Um, with four new growths, I think that should be okay. Um, that's bloomed regular for me. Even when it was in a sorry state, it still managed to put some blooms out. Um, this one, never. So we'll see how those two do. They're not in my way at the moment. I've got a place for them where they're not in my way. Um, that's their saving grace, quite honestly. <laughs> if they were in my way, they might not be here much longer. But the Nadosa looks, certainly looks like it's pulling on now. We'll see how they go. Now this is some um, Brassolalio uh, Make. Um, this is a gift that isn't a gift. Technically speaking, it's part of a swapsies. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I haven't done my bit yet, but that's coming soon. I need to get all this draw out of the way. Uh, I've still got one box to do. I also need to get this Malvern show sorted out and actually go there and attend. And then after that, I've got a clear spell for a while, at which point I can concentrate on things I've been neglecting, shall we say. This one did have pretty good roots on it, um, but whether it had good roots or not, it's certainly making up for it now. There's roots coming out on this all over the place. So this is going to establish itself in this pot quite quickly and it should take off like a rocket. Um, as far as new growths are concerned, they're in there. Um, there's signs in many places of new growths, but they're just starting. So they're quite difficult to spot in a jungle like this. I mean, there's two here. Um, there's one up in the middle there, definitely. Um, so there are new growths, and some of the gro growths that are on here are relatively new. And if that's true, there's no reason why they shouldn't bloom. Now, I'm reliably told that this tends to bloom in the winter, um, and it's done that regularly. Um, but you have to bear in mind, it's now had a total change of environment, um, and that can affect its blooming period. Um, so we'll have to see how, how this one does. Um, but in theory, there should be some blooms at the appropriate time. It's a good plant. I'm very, very pleased with this plant. And there are new growths and plenty of new roots pushing out now. Um, that should take off. Um, I would say in a year or two, that's going to be a specimen plant. And with any luck at the appropriate time, absolutely smothered in blooms. This is, as a plant, not this one specifically, but as a type is quite prolific as far as growth and blooms are concerned. It's just obviously it's whatever went into this just works and some, some hybrids just don't. They never seem to grow that well. They produce relatively poor bloomings, just the odd one or two, but this one just works. So once it gets a hold in this pot, which it's doing, this should turn into quite a large plant at some considerable speed. It's a vigorous grower and prolific bloomer. So I'm looking forward to this, you know, getting going and uh, performing well down the line. Consequences of not picking my plants up for a while. That's one of my shari babies up near the glass there and it's got a spike. That, that spike's three inches long. I didn't even know it existed. So I haven't picked that plant up for some time and, and uh, the make that I've just shown you sits in front of it so I can't even see it properly. I can just about get the lance over the top to get some water in it. Um, but that's sat at an angle, that pot at the moment, which means when I do use the sprayer to water it, the water's going to all head down one side of the pot. So I need to get a tray under that one and um, level it up a bit. 
uh, I will have to start getting back to handling the plants and watering them properly uh, as soon as I can. I'm not really ready for that at the moment. I mean, quite honestly, what I'm doing now is 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 making my back twinge just picking up and moving around the holy clay pots, putting them down, putting them back again. So I need to go careful still, despite not being in a lot of pain. It's still there, it's not gone. It's just nowhere near as bad as it was. So it's co uh, manageable, we'll call it. <laughs> but yeah, so there's a sherry baby spike coming on. I have to keep my eye on that now I know it's there because that could head up and touch the glass and that will frazzle it. Certainly in the sort of weather we had yesterday, anyway. I don't know what's going to happen today. At the moment, it's a clear blue sky, but it's got quite a haze over it. So not crystal clear blue sky like it was yesterday. But the sun hasn't got round here yet, which is why I'm filming and watering. Let's get it done before the heat builds up. Now these two are pieces of the same plant, and um, they're in a severe state of... Uh, rescue, recovery, whatever you're at it. Boy, is it slow progress, but at least there is some progress. Um, latest growth on here, quite pathetic, but done in the winter. I mean, you can see the size the leaves and bulbs ought to be, despite them being desiccated. Well, they had no roots for ages. You know, I'm surprised that, this, that these have even lived. But there is some root activity, both down in the pot and from the base of that new growth. Um, so, on its way, but very, very slowly. What's going to bring this plant on, if it happens, is another new growth that's capable of growing to full size. That will pull it on. And this one over here did exactly the same thing. Um, this is its latest growth, uh, a winter growth, quite poor. Um, but there is some root activity going on, and it's managing both of these so far to maintain the old leaves on the older bulbs and as long as those are there there's obviously some photosynthesis going on which helps feed the plant you know poor root system it's not going to be taking much in from the base of the plant so its leaves are adding some stuff in there you know the sugars and things that help feed the plant so again slow progress this one needs exactly the same as the other one it needs another new growth soon like now this time of year when it can grow to full size with associated roots and start to pull these two pieces on you might wonder why i'm trying to rescue these i'll show you yeah exactly <laughs> that that's why i'm working on these plus a very long time ago um, when this last bloomed which is a very long time ago I promised a piece to somebody when I divided it. Well, that was before it decided to die on me, or virtually die on me. So obviously, handing over a piece of this is quite a long way off still, but it's not forgotten. Not forgotten. Now these are two of my scruffier plants that one day will be good plants. How many years that will be, I don't know, but um, this one was allowed to grow before I got it in all directions yeah so it, it's got pseudo bulbs coming out you know along a rhizome that sort of went either side of it and um, yeah I mean that leaf was damaged um, so that's bent that's got two good leaves on it that's got a single leaf <laughs> see I mean that one even pushed out two leaves in the same direction that shouldn't happen but nonetheless as far as the plant is concerned scruffy though it is and a poor root system when I got it it's making up for it now um, it's um, pushed out a nice new growth this is the one that did something really strange it pushed out a new growth and it aborted it rotted and then out of the rotted bit came this so it just sorted itself out I haven't seen one do that quite to that extent before. But again, we've got quite quite a reasonable root system coming out. You can head down in the pot. Um, yeah, so we've got some good root growth going on now and a lovely strong new growth. Um, again, there's no reason why that shouldn't bloom. What have we got here then? This is... Oh, this is the Harrisoni, Harrisoniana. Um one named clone uh, volcan volcano queen and another named clone binot. So effectively, 
although they're named clones, it, it is in fact a species, Harrisoniana. So we'll see what that one looks like one day down the line. And this one, oh, stalled. Um, lost its new growth when I got it and didn't have a good root system. And it, it sat there for a very, very long time doing nothing, basically. Well, in recent months, it's taken off. It, it now is producing roots in all sorts of directions and it's pushing up a nice, very strong new growth. And um, again, no reason why it shouldn't bloom on that because previous growths have actually bloomed. Again, this is, uh, it's not as tatty as it looks. What makes it tatty is this. It's effectively a broken leaf, but the fact that it's stayed green, I've left it on there. Um, once this opens its leaf um, and is established, I'll probably take that one off. Because if you could imagine it without that leaf, it's not a bad plant. You know, the bulbs are upright, there's a leafless one at the back, and that would make two leafless ones. But with this one pushing up here, with a nice strong new shiny leaf on it, that won't look too bad. But as long as this thing dangles down there, it's never going to look good, but at the moment that leaf's doing no harm. If there was nothing getting through from the bulb to that leaf, it would have yellowed and fall fallen off by now, and it hasn't. So it is sort of partially connected to the plant still so that's the only reason I'm leaving it basically so that's those two. Oh, I've got to say what that one was didn't I it's the one with the eight foot name Siang Yu red pearl red dragonfly well come on then let's have some red get on with it <laughs> as I say there's no reason why that new growth shouldn't bloom when it gets there down the line a bit um, this one's opening its leaf now so uh, that one that should be first and that will follow on behind somewhere I mean a lot of cattleyas are autumn and winter bloomers that that's how they are it's their season um, but we'll see how we go with these they'll you know many of these uh, new acquisitions during last year so they will be first time bloomers when they get there we'll have to see what they're like but I'm looking forward to that red one <laughs> This is another one of the new ones from last year, so a non-bloomer for me. Um, this had some root, it wasn't a bad little plant, and this is a small cattleya type, it's never going to grow huge. But what it has done is it pushed out this new growth during the winter, and then heading off in the opposite direction, this one matured, and it's now got this one growing, and coming out this end, it's now got this one growing. And it's certainly made up for lost time with the old roots. <laughs> that one's just done roots. Can't ask for more than that, can you? I like to try and keep these root tips in the pot, because when I water these, um, I don't allow them to drain um, before putting them back in their drip tray. I actually let them drain into the drip tray, because quite a lot of them have got roots down at that level. So they can soak up the water in the drip tray. A little bit of extra hydration. That's a nice little plant. Um, looking forward to the blooms on that. That's got a name, a pretty long name as well. This is Cattleya Little Lemon Drops, crossed with Catletonia. Why not? <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> we'll find out why not if it blooms, and I look at the blooms and go, why not? <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some good stuff on this one. Um, not sure this is blooming size, but being a small cattleya type, I don't see why not. It hasn't bloomed yet, but it may do on those latest two growths. That's a wait and see. It might be the next set of new growths that produce the blooms, but hopefully at least one of those will. Now this one is Lelia anseps, and um, it's very easy to just accept that the Lelias are part of the Cattleya Alliance, so they need the same treatment, you know, really good light and, um, you know, don't like to get cold and all stuff like this. Well, this is Mr. Awkward. This one grows naturally quite high up. It's actually a cool grower and doesn't like heat. It likes the bright light. I mean, this can even be found growing on rocks in very exposed places, but high up. The air's cool. There's a difference. So, um, what did this one do last? It grew these two, and they weren't as large as previous bulbs. This was a division of a specimen, specimen plant from a friend a while ago. Um, but nonetheless, it produced two good bulbs, two nice leaves, and both of them bloomed. I was over the moon. 
because this is one of my favourite Cattleya type blooms, Lelia anseps, beautiful. Um, and what it's up to at the moment is a massive regeneration of its root system from these two bulbs. Now, not at the time they were growing, the roots came later. <laughs> and now it's got two strong new growths coming out from, because effectively it's got two leads on it. So um, it looks like it's going to work in pairs. Um, at some point down the line, one of those leads might manage to push out two growths. And then we're into three leads, and the possibility of three spikes at the same time. But nonetheless, no reason why those two new growths shouldn't push on strongly now and, and bloom down the line when it's time. Certainly made up for its... Uh, <laughs> it had poorer roots on the older part of the plant, but um, I've got no worries about the root system now. It's pushed out strong. So it's uh, to look forward to down the line. So you've heard me talking about microclimates, yeah? So Cattleyas, most of them like some good warmth, bright light, away you go, yeah? So top shelf, light from above, both sides, and um, they do well, yeah? But Mr. Awkward that I was just talking about, well, two Mr. Awkwards really, there's the um, Ivanagara Apple Blossom. You get that in that light up there, it will burn, trust me burnt leaf. <laughs> They're all about that. So that one hides behind other plants. So it still gets quite good light but it's diffused. Microclimate. Yeah? And Mr. Cool lives down there on the floor. So close to the glass, still getting good light, but it's right in the line of fire of the inlet fan. So it gets a cool breeze on it. So I'm keeping it cooler just by sticking it on the floor and positioning it in such a way that it gets some cool air when that inlet fan kicks on, which is when it starts to get warmer than it would like. So it then gets some cooler air. So it should work. And this is, um, I've forgotten, Pradit Spots, I think. Yeah, it's a Lelio Cattleya, um, possibly. <laughs> um, Pradit Spots. Um, and again, not handling the plants, yeah? I keep, you can see the leaves have a direction here. There's like a front and a back. Well, obviously the front needs to face the light, yeah? To maximize photosynthesis. But because I haven't picked this plant up and it had others in front of it, what I hadn't noticed is that's reacting to strong light. That's its latest new growth. Now, last time I picked that plant up, that hadn't opened its leaves. Well, now it has, and I've just noticed it looks like there's a sheath down in there too. But that's reacting, yeah? That's a new growth. It's too close to the glass, so that needs to come back a stage. Um, oh, now, this is four plants in here, because I bought one, and that had two plants in the pot, and then I had another one, um, possibly in the big box, I can't remember. And that had two plants in it as well. Seems to be a trait of where this came from, is that they've often got two plants in the pot, um, which is nice. So there's four plants in here in various stages of growth. Um, obviously some of them are pro now producing good root systems. Um, and some of them, oh, there's a new growth pushing up down there somewhere. Yep, in the middle there. Uh, there's another one here. So there, there is some active growth, but it's difficult to work out which roots go with which of the four plants and where the new growths are. But I'm just going to let that grow. It's a community pot. That was the idea. Um, this is the maximum size. You're not going to get any bigger than that. And a good pot full like that, when that comes into bloom, should be quite spectacular. But it's got to come away from the glass. Yeah, Purple tinges. Those are delicately, you know, this is strappy. This is like leather. It's more like cardboard, rigid, absolutely strong. Now these aren't yet. See, these have only just opened, so they're delicate. They'll firm up as they extend, and you can see these have a tendency to open flat as a pair by foliate. Um, there are some bulbs in there with one leaf, but most have got two. Um, yeah, so I just need to get that back away from the light let that mature and as it's got some other new growths they're going to be tender as well so now's the time to just pull it back a bit microclimates again you know just adjust the light by the distance from the glass yeah that's not on a high shelf that actually lives in that big space there um, 
and right up against the glass. Yeah? Well, there's a plant there right up against the glass too. That's having that's fine. So this this big pot now needs to go there. So it's got something in front of it. A little bit less light, a little microclimate. Okay, so that's it with the holy clay pots. And um, I'll now put me back back together. And the only other thing, I want to give my mounts a proper water today. Um, they had one two days ago. Yesterday they had a spray. Um, today they get a proper watering. After yesterday's heat and the lack of a fogger, um, they'll have dried out more than they would have done normally. So today they need a proper good soak. And then depending on what sort of weather we have, um, it is implied with the weather forecast that the weather's going to break during the week and we could get rain later in the week, probably just in time for Malvern, you know. You've got an international show that's absolutely massive that involves walking around, looking at stuff in the nice open air. Yeah, well, let's have some rain then. That'll work well, won't it? Luckily, the, um, the orchid show is inside a huge marquee, so all you've got to do is make a break for it between your car and the marquee, and, um, and that's it. Once you're in there, if it's chucking it down, well, all you've got to do is venture out for <laughs> comfort breaks, food, or in my case, coffee. But uh, we'll see, you know. Hopefully it won't be continuous rain. But places like that, out in what is effectively a vast field, there are proper roadways are fact on that show ground but there's a lot of stuff that's actually out on the grass and if it rains really hard over the period it will be a mud bath by the by the time it gets to sunday but luckily i'm hoping to get there first thing on friday um, before it all gets churned up if it is going to rain but we'll have to wait and see but yeah um looking forward to it i've got to get all my plants sorted out now today to take round to the collection point to go off to Malvern and having had a little bit of a panic request it's literally you know stuff that I wouldn't dream of normally putting in I mean Mr Harry wasn't going to go because quite honestly as this plant goes only having four blooms is not a good blooming I like it it's great but that's going to go now it's another plant with blooms on and from what they were saying they'll take anything with a flower well, there are limitations, <laughs> um, but I mean the um, the epidendrum. I mean, if I just take the uh, the blooms that are dropping near the base off, it's still got five spikes on it, so that can go. I wasn't, I wouldn't have dreamt of taking that under normal circumstances because it's sort of past its best. But with a little tidy up and removing the dead blooms off the base of those uh, spikes. It's a plant with five spikes on, and it's still got buds. So once the dead bits are off, it'll still look good. So that can go. And I didn't want to put my Disa in, but that's going to go in. Um, basically, it's Tuesday today. The judging is Thursday evening. Yeah, so this isn't going to get looked at on the display until Thursday evening. And by then, this one will be open, and possibly even that one. Um, okay this spike won't be open it might be open by the end of the show but nonetheless it's a plant with blooms on so I and um, somebody's going to get strict instructions under pain of death if you put any tap water on that while that's at the show I will hang you from the top of the marquee I'm not mucking about I'm hoping that they'll take some sensible water with them Actually, I might even put a bottle of my RO water in with Roger's Disa water written on it. I do not want tap water anywhere near those plants. But then Mike's going to be there, my friend Mike, and he grows Disas. He will have quite a few Disas in the show. And I can't imagine he'd trust to people chucking tap water on his Disas, so he's probably made arrangements to have some rainwater or something. But I'll have a chat when I take the plants around this evening. Um, yeah, so that, that'll do for today. I'll get this one uh, knocked up and um, get this one posted soon. And, um, and we'll see where we go from there. But yeah, update on the holy clay pots. As I say, there's one that wasn't filmed because it's no longer in a holy clay pot because it got taken out to be posted to somebody else which that's on its way today hopefully if I don't get round to doing the last box full today I'll do it tomorrow 
that will be the latest time it will, uh, and if I do it tomorrow, it can go to Postman Pat tomorrow as well. Um, <clears throat> but I'll see how I get on today. And um, yeah, I mean, I've chatted to the lady in question, finally made contact, that's good. And she's happy to have bare rooted plants to make sure they go in the box. Well, with permission, I'm happy to do that. And quite honestly, the Catlia is in a reasonable sized pot. And it hasn't long been put in there, so it's not like it's established in that pot yet. So that one could be bare rooted. And Catlias do bounce back pretty good. And the, the climate where they're off to in Portugal is conducive to things taking off like rockets, because they, you know, they got the weather, they got the light, they got the good weather and everything. So uh, we'll see how we go. But um, with that proviso, there's no reason why all the plants for that particular winner will go in a box by hook or by crook and with a crowbar if necessary. They're going in the box. <laughs> See you next time.